brothers and sisters greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus I'm happy this morning to welcome you once again to our online sermon and thank you for tuning in and for joining us this morning my name is Reverend Felix Kalilu I'm born again I love the Lord as my personal savior. I'm currently serving is, you know, the Lord here at AIC Baraki, Mombasa, Kenya. Storms of life happen to us every now and then. This is because they are part and parcel of our lives. While we live here on half, you know, Storms of life will come and go, come and go. When we talk about storms of life, what are we talking about here? We are simply talking about the normal challenges, problems, difficulties that we face in life. This happened to everyone and anyone. They can happen to the young and the old, the rich and the poor, the educated and the uneducated, the strong and the weak as well. They happen to believers and to unbelievers. These terms, like I say, they normally come to us every now and then. They happen to individuals they happen in our marriages, in our families, at our homes. They happen at our places of work, in our businesses, in organizations, institutions. They happen in the society. They happen in a nation and even to, you know, the whole globe. Like it is happening right now. Right now, the whole world is deep in a storm. And this storm is quite threatening, the storm of the COVID-19. You know, this storm is shaking, you know, individuals. This storm is shaking relationships. This storm is currently shaking jobs, businesses, institutions, organizations, governments. It is even shaking nations, you know, nations and the whole globe. This reminds me of what Psalm 11 verse 3 says. What does it say? When the foundations are being destroyed, when the foundations are being shaken, like today, they are being shaken by the corona. What can the righteous do what can the man of god what can the saints do putting this into context when the storms of life hit hard like right now in person what do you do where do you go for help how do you cope or even strive to overcome the storms. Many turn to their friends or even parents for help. Others will turn to their wealth or even money. Some turn to their pastors and bishops and churches. With others turning to magicians, witch doctors, and diviners all this is to look for solution to their storms hawa ni wale wanaofikiri wanaotafuta njia za mkato na kwao ni bora suluhisho lipatikane yani awaangalie hili suluhisho linapatikana kwa njia gani in other words they don't focus on Suluhisho bora. They only focus on bora wapate suluhisho. This morning, 
I want to talk to us about, you know, what to do when storms come. And my theme, my topic this morning is on being ready to cope with storms of life. Being ready to cope with the storms of life. And this is drawn from one text, a case where Jesus was traveling in a boat with his disciples and a storm hit them. Let's go together and read from Matthew chapter 8 verse 23 to 27. Then he got into the boat. This is Jesus. Together with his disciples who followed him. Without warning, a furious storm came up on the lake. So that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him up, saying, Lord, save us. We are going to drown. In other words, we are going to die. Verse 26, the Bible says, He replied, You of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. Verse 27, the men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. In this text, friends, we see Jesus with his disciples in a boat sailing in a lake. And this must have been Lake Galilee. And here they were hit by a life threatening storm. They really struggled with it until they ended up, re, you know, turning to Jesus. And Jesus came along and calmed the storm. And they were saved eventually. Now from this story, as I talk to us about being ready to cope with storms of life, there are several principles for us to learn on how, what we can do, you know, when storms come. But this morning, I am focusing on what happens when these storms of life strike. What happens? And I have five reasons for you and me why we should be ready to cope with storms of life. Five reasons, you know, drawn from you know, this text focusing on what happened exactly when this storm, you know, came. How the disciples responded and how eventually our Lord calmed it down. You know, there are at least five reasons we can draw from that for us to get a reason, a good reason as to why we should be ready. We should be ready to cope with any storm of life that may come to us anytime. Because storms of life, no more with our lives. They will come 
they will go. They will come, they will go. In actually, you know, in actual fact, we are saying here, they are no more part of our lives. And so, reason number one storms of life tend to come after success. Storms of life tend to come after success. When you read verse 23, Jesus and his disciples, you know, they had just gotten into that boat and they were just traveling. They were just going away. They were going to the other side of the lake, just as the Bible says. And this was after a successful ministry. And this we find in the preceding, you know, the previous verses from the same, same chapter, chapter number 8. Verse 1 to verse 4, we see them succeeding in healing a man who had leprosy. In verse 5 to 13, we see them succeeding in healing the child of the centurion. And Jesus commended his faith. From verse 14 to verse 17, they succeeded in healing. You know, the mother-in-law to Peter, she had been sick and she was healed. And not only her, but many other people who were brought to Jesus for healing. And finally, in the same chapter, verse 18 to you know, verse 22. We see Jesus succeeding in teaching his disciples on matters discipleship. And so, this storm came immediately after that kind of success. And that's why we need to let, you know, we need to watch out. We need to be alert whenever we succeed. Because there may be a possible storm coming our way. And so, let us be ready because storms of life tend to come after success. That is number one. Reason number two. Storms of life most times come without prior warning. Verse 24 the Bible says a furious storm came without a warning and threatened to sweep over the abort. Sometimes these storms, you know, come at any time. And they don't, you know, at times send a signal. That's why I have a problem with some of the prophecies given by some of us preachers. You know, storms of life are part and parcel of our lives. And like you are saying here, yes, we may have a few or some of them, you know, having some prior indication prior warning that they are coming yes but we are saying here most times they come without a warning like the case here and so all kinds of storms like we are saying will come but not give any warning a storm like the you know sickness it may come all of a sudden I was well and after one hour I'm sick loss of a loved one we are walking together we are talking you know we are enjoying our time together and the next minute our brother our sister is gone a job something can happen out there and all of a sudden you lose a job. That's a storm. Disputes, accidents. 
betrayal by a friend, false accusations, failures. You know, all this we are saying, they come mostly without prior warning. And so, this gives us a reason to be ready to cope up with the storms which may come to us any time. Reason number three. Storms of life usually bring about, you know, stress. They may cause a strain. In verse number 25, when the disciples were struck by this storm and their lives were threatened, they were terrified, they were distressed, and they cried out to Jesus, Lord, save us. Save us, because it looks like we are going to die. We are going to drown. You know, in times of storms, people tend to be distressed. Distressed at home, in their marriages, in their relationships, at their workplace, you know, in an organization, in a nation, and even the world at large, like what is happening at the moment. Friends, we should be ready all the time, not only, you know, for good things, even for bad things like storms. Because whenever they come, they usually come with stress. You know, they bring about stress. As I talked to you this morning, is there a storm that is driving you crazy? And you're wondering, what next? Sometimes, you know, thoughts of suicide you know, flash in your mind. You know, thoughts to do, you know, ugly things, you know, are coming in your mind. Just get to know this. Yes, you should not entertain them, one. But two, you have somebody to turn to. Just like the disciples here. They thought now the end of their lives had come. But good enough, they had one, Jesus, whom they turned to. So you too, brother, sister, however, you know, tough, you know, however life-threatening storm, you know, you're facing, turn to Jesus. Turn to him. And just like he calmed that storm down, he will calm your storm and you will be safe. Reason number four. Storms of life most times come to test our faith. When we read in verse 26, when Jesus woke up, you know, Matthew presents him to have undressed the disciples and then turned to the, to the storm and calmed it down. When you look at the same story presented by Luke, chapter number 20, you know, 8, verse number 25. You know, he says, Jesus calmed the storm first. And then he turned to, to his disciples. Is there any contradiction here? No. This is what theologians call synoptic problem. And we have no time to address it. The fact remains, Jesus woke up and a storm was calmed. And he also rebuked the disciples. Jesus expected the disciples to exercise their faith. Either by rebuking the storm 
to calm down or leave it alone for it was to come to an end eventually so they were to stay calm by faith knowing that this will come to an end and this is exactly what you are supposed to do in some of the storms we face in life and so he rebuked them because they lacked faith they never you know their action was not expected by the Lord you know sometimes God allows some storms of life to come to us so that our faith may be tested and not only being tested the faith may be strengthened it is through such storms that give the true measure of who we are as believers that's why i concur with the words of martin luther king when he said and i quote the ultimate measure of a man is not when he stands in moments of comfort and convenience but when he stands in times of challenge and controversy end of quote and so my friends it is true that we may not know you or understand you when things are good when things are happy happy until when you know there's a problem there's a difficulty there's a challenge that is when you reveal yourself who you are and so we should know that when these storms are coming our way they are not just coming to destroy us they are not just coming to finish us they are coming to test our faith reason number five and the last storms of life do not leave us where they find us in verse 27 we read that when the disciples called on jesus you know this is about placing their anchor their trust on jesus you know at the raging storms jesus calmed the storms and they were amazed until they wondered you know how the winds you know how comes that the winds and the waves obey this man they began to ask who is this man and you know by so doing they came to understand jesus better they come they came to see and to understand that jesus had power you know when we place our anchor on jesus at the end of every storm we will have enough grace to sustain us in the storm it doesn't matter how long it takes jesus will provide enough grace sufficient grace for us to go through we will also acquire the right lenses to view all the storms from the right perspective that's why we will not complain we will not you know give up we will not accuse one another or even accuse someone having the right lenses we will look at a storm as an opportunity to grow opportunity to come closer to god opportunity to know better who god is we will also acquire wisdom and knowledge knowledge on how to deal with the storms of life you know through that experience 
once it happens once we acquire some some wisdom some knowledge on how to go through to cope up with the next storm and the others to come we will grow in the faith and in our, our understanding of the Lord and so when we face storms of life you know it is an opportunity I want you to to, 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 to to have this with you always whenever you face any storm that it's an opportunity to to get you know you know to learn to know the Lord better to grow in faith can we therefore as we ask ourselves embrace storms of life as they come to us yes let's embrace them for they come to us for our own good because they don't find us wherever they you know they found us at the end of the storm you learn you grow and you know the lord better as i conclude brothers and sisters you need to be reminded that storms of life are part and parcel of our lives what is happening today is something normal although we look at it and look at the magnitude you know a storm covering the whole globe we look at it and you know take it as if it's abnormal it is very normal only that it is you know you know it is facing the whole world this morning the Lord wants us to be ready to face or to cope with any kind of a storm however small it is however big it is that's why he has spoken to us about being ready to cope with storms of life we have seen five reasons one they tend to come after success two they tend you know most times they tend to come without prior warning thirdly they usually bring about stress or strain fourthly most times they come to test our faith and finally they do not leave us where they find us storm of life is an opportunity that is you know they bring something good in our lives as believers and that's why I'm inviting you in our next sermon I will talk about something related to that but as I close a story is told of one of my favorite you know others he had a wife who was diagnosed with cancer and it was not easy for him members of the press you know they were talking to him and they pushed a question what's up and this is what he said i know this is a storm for me and my family about storms of life you are either getting out of a storm or you are already in it or you are about to get into one right now my family is already in a storm let's think about it and may the lord god bless each one of you and let's get ready to cope with any storm of life that comes our way i will ask my wife to come over thank god for the message
and pray for us all as we face the global storm we are facing and also the Lord to help each one of us in the storms we may be facing in life. Welcome my wife. Basi tuombe. Baba yetu na mungu wetu katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Tunakushukuru kwa neno lako ambalo limetujia kwa jia ya kueleweka. Na tumelipokea bwana. Hata linapo tutia moyo wakati huu ambapo tunapitia tufeni ya maisha ambayo ni gumu mno. Gonjwa hili la coronavirus. Na tunakushukuru bwana kwa maana umetuhimiza kupitia kwa dhoruba za maisha ambazo hazina budi kufika kwetu ya kwamba tuweze kukaa kwako tukuangalie wewe na zaidi kujua ya kwamba mambo haya yanakuja na kwenda ila tuki imani yetu ikidhibitika kwako mtakatifu tutaweza kushinda kama vile wanafunzi hawa waliweza kukuita baada ya kumwa kupatwa na dhoruba baharini na wakamwamsha Yesu akakemea dhoruba na wakaweza kushinda na kuendelea na maisha. Bwana tusaidie ya kwamba imani yetu haitapotea hata wakati huu ambapo tufani hii imetukumba kama taifa, imetukumba kama ulimwengu na watu wameangaika, mataifa yameangaika. Lakini sisi tumaini letu liko kwako. Bwana Yesu tusaidie katika jina la Yesu Kristo ya kwamba hatutapotea. Kuna wengine pia wanapitia uh, dhoruba za kila aina katika maisha yao sasa hivi Bwana tunaendelea kuomba katika jina la Yesu Kristo pamoja na hili ambalo ni letu sisi wote uweze kutushindania uweze kuonekana katika maisha yetu na ukatupe ushindi ambao unatoka kwako katika jina la Yesu Sande Bwana maana kama vile tulikushangilia ya kwamba umefufuka tunajua ya kwamba ndani ya maisha yetu hata utatupatia nguvu za kushida dhoruba hizi na tufeni hizi za maisha kwa utukufu wa jina lako basi winuliwe na uimidiwe neno hili liwe na mazao ndani ya maisha yetu maana tumeomba tukiamini katika jina la Yesu Kristo bwana tuomba pamoja na kushukuru amen bwana Yesu awabariki